the engine uh, is in operation now. Um, right now we have it tore down for a, what they call a stable inspection and that is being put back together as we speak. We'll have it running probably by June this year. It's, uh, it's been a labor of love, no doubt. We've, uh, we've worked on it now for 15 or 20 years. I'm sure she'll run and she'll run safely. That's, uh, that's the biggest thing with the steam locomotive yeah. is they have to be repaired correctly. I mean, we have uh, gone above and beyond the call of duty to make sure that this locomotive is 100% FRA approved. That's a big deal is making sure that it is safe to run and uh, anything that uh, needs attention we've, uh, we've repaired or are in the process mm -hmm. of repairing. So. Mm -hmm. This video is about the fifth year inspection. Why? Well, safety. Steam and water have a lot of power, more than we think, and explosion risks are real. Before I start, here's my disclaimer. I invite all the railroad engineers to actually correct me in the comments. Please do not mistake this video as training. I am a chemist, actually, with expertise in corrosion of power plant systems and do not claim to know it all. My goal with this little video is to create a broader understanding of what it takes to maintain a historic steam locomotive in operating order so that we can safely provide rights to the public with our nice and wise and still steaming hot lady. Water, steam and steel are a powerful mix. In several dimensions actually, such as turning wheels to make locomotives pull trains. However, water, steam and steel may also become a dangerous powerful mix. Steam explosions are real, they do happen. We, the volunteers of the Carson Colorado Railroad, take safety seriously. We make sure that our steam engine number 18's operation and maintenance complies with all federal railroad administration requirements. We want to go home after a days of volunteer work the very same way as we arrived. We want to make sure that if you visit the engine in the engine house or take a ride, that you, our guest, leave just as you arrived. Our hope is that you only take the moments and memories to cherish home and pictures to remind you of a fun, safe time you had with our Engine 18. The fifth year inspection was due in 2023 and is about to be completed. Let's go in the background where those regulations came from and why those stay bold inspections need to get done. It dates back to the 1908 Ash Pen Act that was passed by Congress. And in 1911, when our Engine 18 actually was built, Congress also passed the Locomotive Inspection Act and it all was consolidated into the steam locomotive regulations codified under 49 CFR Code of Re Federal Regulations, Part 230. Now, back when those regulations were put in place, there were approximately 70,000 steam locomotives in service. As any lover of steam locomotive knows, those are pieces of machinery that require intensive labor, um, lots of TLC, hard work to actually maintain them in a safe and reliable condition so that the public can enjoy it. One thing I want to point out here quickly is 
as the introduction states, one cubic inch of water will expand to 1600 cubic inch of steam under atmospheric pressure at 150 pounds per square inch it is less but it also has stored all this power and it is saturated at 336 degrees i assume fahrenheit here when steam boilers rupture it is really a cataclysmic event something that we want to prevent at all costs those inspections are there for a reason. Only about a hundred steam engines remain under the jurisdiction of the Federal Railroad Administration. So what do annual inspection for a steam engine entail? Annual inspections are calendar driven, not service day. So even if the steam locomotive operated only one service day, it has to be inspected. The annual inspection includes all requirements of the daily inspections, the 31 service day inspection. There's a difference between the calendar day and the service day. At each fifth annual inspection, a stay bolt and cap inspection is required. That's exactly where the cars in Colorado was at the beginning of April in 2023 and since has undertaken those flexible stable and cap inspection. You can read more about that on this website. Here is an excerpt from the Federal Code of Regulation of how to do it during this 31 service day inspection. All stables should be hammer tested. It's a ultimately at the fifth annual inspection the caps of the flexible stables have to be removed, inspected, and that is a much, much bigger task than just checking the accessible stables um, with the hammer check. It really involves, you need to basically take the engine apart. That's what it means. So it's a big deal. Now let's look a little closer. What are stables actually? and there are several iterations of stable designs. The real winner came in 1903 or 1904 when Mr. Tate patented his stable with which provided much more flexibility and then was also mass produced by the Flannery Brothers in Philadelphia with a much more suitable steel. However, the developments did not stop there. You see another patent from 1909, some other developments for the stables, and some of the stables that I will show you later on in the video, they look kind of similar like that. This here is a cross section and shows you on the bottom is the sheet uh, that would face the firebox and the top is then a steam would be and you see how the stables go at different lengths and different angles and so metal obviously expands and it would have some serious problems if it wouldn't have some flexible gif and here is another little detail of the patent by mr St in 1911 the year when the engine was built again a slightly different design geared toward making sure that the metal when it's facing fire site and steam site that there wouldn't be too much stresses put on the metal this picture ha huh, guess what this is those are old uh, stables that partially were cut out here a couple of stresses how it happened so you can see if there's shear on the, the two metal sheets where they go through you can develop stresses in the stable itself you can also create stresses on the valve of the stables when the metals are basically expand here or you can create such wave-like thingies and really create more stresses and create leaks there as well and there are probably many other options of how steam may leak out and corrosion may happen and stresses may be exerted at those holes but just to show a couple let's show it how 
it is in the engine itself. So here you see the firebox at the rear of the boiler. You see the flues and water space. You will send the hot air through the flue and you have the water going into steam up into the vacant zone. And here you have the steam. So you can see where the stables are here at the top of the firebox and obviously connecting to the back head and then also connecting the firebox to the throw sheet and so on and when you look at this intersection you obviously have quite a bit of uh, stresses potentially going on if we look at the back of the firebox, so the, where you see the round dots, and that is the firebox looking toward the flues where the hot air is going through to hit the water. And left and right, and you see how the spray bolts are connecting the firebox to the wrapper sheet. Obviously, different temperatures in a firebox. The steel is exposed to much higher temperatures than the wrapper sheet is exposed to with uh, water and steam. So the point of a flexible inspection is simply, if these were through drilled all the way up into the head, we wouldn't have to pull these. You could actually do it a different things. But since they're not, you're basically checking because that's the breaking point if any of these are broken and uh, you have to do it every five years. So all you gotta do is pull the cap off, hammer it, and you should be able to hear it's broken. And those aren't. Because it's ringing everything. Because it's ringing. Yeah. And now and again, you're really lucky, the ball will just fall out when you hit it. <laughs> and then you know it's broken. <laughs> It might look like this. Mm. Or it might look like this. Okay, so it's what is it? It's just a rigid stable. Uh -huh. yeah. The things that make this not rigid. Let's draw another picture. You okay with that? Yep. <laughs> We've not that let's, all let's start this fire. <laughs> and it's in a box, right? And it can go out through these tubes. And the whole thing is surrounded by water. Right? Yep. But we recognize that we have to have stables to hold these flat surfaces. Mm -hmm. Right? The tubes are holding this surface and yeah. this one. Yeah. And Actually, there will be other braces inside there. You uh -huh. probably saw pictures of those. Yeah. Okay. This was probably made with all rigid All stables. rigid, yeah, yeah. Look at where the flexible ones have been added. Okay. Uh -huh. They're at the front of the firebox. Uh -huh. They go down the sides. A yeah. Bit. When this fire, especially with an oil burner, but any steam locomotive when it's when it's working hard the exhaust steam from the engine goes up through the stack that petticoat pipe is in there it creates a vacuum and it pulls the fire so the harder the thing is working the more it's pulling the fire so when it's working hard the fire is going to be hotter and hotter and you can really fire it hard with an oil burn. You can burn a lot of oil, mm -hmm. you create a lot of temperature. And this, this region of the firebox will be the hottest because that fire is going like so. Yeah. Actually, um, the oil burning fire comes out of the burner down low and makes a loop like that. Anyway. So that if you, is, is the hottest, basically. That that's a real hot region. Mm -hmm. So if you if you think about just this sheet that has all these tubes mm -hmm. and the sides of the firebox in this region, they're going to expand and get longer. Even though it's cooled by water, those mm -hmm. will be hotter. They'll get 
that sheet will get longer. This this yeah. point will move up. Wow. Okay. Uh huh. So we put in something like this. Uh huh. This is fastened to the sheet. This is fastened to the the wrapper, which yeah. is the, yeah. the outside. And when this when this sheet tries to grow, that can lift mm -hmm. off its seat. Mm -hmm. It can't. The pressure isn't going to blow it in because it's going to hold that way. But when that sheet gets real hot, this is free to lift off yeah. just yeah. a little bit. A rigid would have to try to buckle, mm. and they yeah. crack. Yeah. yeah. So that's why. They started putting in flexies. Yeah. They put flexibles in in those regions where the rigids broke uh -huh. most. Yeah, yeah. And different lengths is just for different locations. Right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mm -hmm. This one is a different length than this yeah. one, than this one. Yeah. Right? What's this tool? This was close to it. That's a tube roller. This is what goes inside the, the tubes. Oh, okay. Okay. In the firebox. Uh -huh. This is on a taper. Yeah. And if you look carefully, you recognize it. This is on a little bit of an angle. This uh -huh. roller is not parallel to yeah. this axis. Yeah. Yeah. See that slight angle there? Mm -hmm. So when you when you insert this into the tube and drive this <laughs> mandrel into it and turn it, this is trying to yeah. drive in which means that these are climbing up this taper and it will swell that tube out to make it tight in the, in the in hole that's the in the sheet. sheet. Yeah, in the sheet, okay. Mm -hmm. So that's a tube roller. Are you sure you're doing it right, John? No, I'm not calibrated to do it. I've never heard a bad one. You good, John? Good test? I think so. Okay. Yeah, the rust out of that guy? Yeah, I did. But I think the important thing is to get it out of where the... Um, Seal is, is for going. the seal. Uh huh. So. Once you get some air here, I'll throw the gaskets in and I see them and lock them down. Okay. okay. Can 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 you knock again so we can record the sound? Sounds good. What do you think? Do you have more questions and answers? I certainly do. Like. Why do we need stables in the first place? Isn't there another way? Well, there are many questions that pop up as I am observing all the volunteers working with their mechanical skill sets on our Engine 18. So stay tuned as we explore various other topics, such like why are stables needed in the first place? Why did they change from rigid to flexible? Why do we lap valves? And many more topics that do not come to the top of my head right now, but there are many more. So stay tuned for future videos. Thank you for watching. Please share, please like, please subscribe. And stay tuned for more to come.